Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about creating your skincare routine. And if you don't have a scary skincare routine yet, I'm here to help you create one. If you have one already, maybe you just want to tweak it a little bit and maybe you're right on track and your skin is perfect and you're like, eh, I'm not interested. I have some great, amazing things that I just at least want you to know about, whether it's a product, an essential oil, a technique. Um, I'm all about skin. I have to say I was super lucky. I kind of hit the skin lottery from my mom's side of the family and I think also my dad's, but doesn't mean I've never had a skin issue. So today we're talking about skin. Um, when we talk about skin, of course, we know that it is the biggest organ in our body. And that's an important thing when we're talking about um, why we want to make sure we are not only taking care of it, but that we're looking at it actively and not just saying, hey, it's it's just the covering of my body, right? It's really important. And you want to address things as they come up. It's much easier to address something with your skin when you first see it rather than months and months or even years and years later, right? We want to make sure that as we see changes in our skin, and that's a good way, try to monitor yourself. Or maybe if you're in a partnership, ask your partner to look at your back or other places that you can't see so easily. But we want to really keep good care of our skin. It is a great protective covering and it works also to release toxins from our body. Yeah, super important. So when you perspire, and maybe you didn't know this, your skin kind of acts as a, as a chimney, if you will, to release those toxins, to get things that are not really healthy for us out of our body. So baby your skin, take good care of it, make sure that it's well protected. And if you see stuff, honestly, just, you know, take note. So today we're going to talk specifically about creating your skincare routine, which I think is important. Many of you I know um, have a skincare routine. I just want you to maybe um, focus on this for a minute that in the average adult, it takes between 28 and 42 days to regenerate healthy skin. So when whatever I'm talking about, really, you want to give yourself between a month to about a month and a half if you are a typical adult. However, if you are aged 50 and older, and that includes me, it could take up to 84 days. So we're talking about almost three months. So the difference between a month or a month and a half to up to three months. And um, I just, let's be patient, right? We're going to try something. It's not like a kid. Sometimes you'll see a kid, they'll get a cut on their finger or whatever. And within days, it looks like the cut was never even there. We don't have the ability to regenerate our skin the way children, small children do. So if you're an adult and you're listening to the presentation, and I'm, so, I'm assuming most of you are adults, just be patient with yourself, especially as you start a new skincare routine. Most important thing is to make sure that you're specific about what your goals are, that you commit to it, and you really keep going on it as you see those small and incremental um, changes. And then also to have a realistic strategy. So when we talk about skin, we're not talking about putting one drop of essential oil on and then saying, oh, didn't work. We're talking about being consistent, inconsistent in whatever it is that we need to do to make changes in our skin. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is washing our skin. So super Super important. I um, actually in the far left hand corner, I think you can see this. We've got a couple of what I'm going to call the cleansing aspects of the doTERRA skincare line. I love this, um, the essential skincare line. It is hands down my favorite. I use really, I think almost every product, and I don't use every product right now, I cycle through the products throughout the year. Part of that has to do with the fact that I live in a climate that has four seasons. And those four seasons actually change my skin and make, can make it more sensitive or more oily or a little bit drier. So that's why I'm cycling through the product. So from left to right, we've got the pore reducing toner, the invigorating scrub, the facial cleanser, and the tightening serum. So throughout the year, I'm definitely using the facial cleanser, the tightening serum, and the pore reducing toner. I might be using the invigorating scrub in certain times of the year when my Maybe my face is a little more grimy, I'm outside more, or I'm maybe out in the city a little bit more. 
but I'm not using that every single day, certainly because I don't really feel like I need it. Um, we wanna be sure that we know how to cleanse and we know what's the best type of cleanser. Now, these are the four, what I'm gonna call the four cleansing products from doTERRA, but we've got some other cleansing products and we'll talk about them in a little while. Um, many, many products that are on the market today can be filled with ingredients that can often do more harm than good when we um, use them, especially if we're using them consistently. We wanna really, if you're not using doTERRA products, I'd love for you to start reading the labels. And sometimes it's hard to do. The labels are hidden where they'll provide you with a little folded insert with all of the lists of ingredients. You wanna make sure that some of the things that we don't want are um, out and the things that we do want are in, right? Um, many products that are sulfate or alcohol based can be really hard on the skin. They can cause the skin to dry out. We want to make sure that we are encouraging the natural oils in the skin, especially the skin of our face. And when I talk about like moisturizing my face, I'm talking about really from my hairline all the way down to my chest. So this whole area gets the same treatment. And honestly, my hands do too, right? I've tried to be really conscientious about the skin that's exposed to the sun on a regular basis. Next week, we're gonna actually be talking about sunscreen. So not today, but next week, cause that's a whole other topic and can really make this much too long of a, of a Zoom for anybody to, to try to listen to. Want to make sure that um, we're not cleansing too harshly because that can make the body kind of go into overdrive. Where the body begins to overcompensate for having stripped off the oils in the first place. You'll often see people that perhaps um, have uh, challenges with blemishes using a very harsh cleanser, and then their face becomes just super oily because they strip, stripped all the natural oils from their skin. So these four products, um, as I mentioned, are some of my favorite but I'm going to talk about some of the others and why they're important to me. Um, next, I think on the hit parade is let's talk about what's your skin type. So your skin type really um, recognizing what it is, right? And then selecting key ingredients that are going to do the most for your skin. You want to analyze, is my skin begging for moisture? Are you constantly overwhelmed with excessive oil? Um, do you find that your skin changes throughout the day? Um, do you have parts of your face that are different from other parts of your face? So um, let me know in the chat, um, dry, oily, or combination. So give me a D, an O, or a C. I want to hear and tell me in the comments below. And then I'm going to try to tailor my comments as much as possible. But I've really got recommendations for all skin types. Let's start looking um, primarily uh, or first off at oily skin. So if you're the type of person that can take a piece of paper, whether it's blotter or otherwise, and pat it on your skin at the end of the day and really see this much oil, not just makeup ladies, because sometimes our makeup will call, uh, uh, pop off or, or rub off onto a, a cloth. I'm talking about real life oil. I remember um, growing up, I had a friend and at the end of the day, we used to ride home together on the bus or the train and she would take a regular piece of paper just out of a notebook and be able to blot it on her skin and it would be saturated with oil. That's oily skin, right? So what is oil and what causes it? So oily skin is caused by an overabundance of sebum, um, which is basically an oily substance made of fats, which comes from the sebaceous glands. And they're glands that are found under the skin surface and it's created by the body to protect your skin and hair, maintaining its health and shine. Um, oily skin can be caused from a number of reasons, including genetics, but also climate, maybe an inappropriate skincare routine um, and your, your family history, if you will, of what your family skin is like will likely determine a lot of what you see in your own skin. Nailing down an appropriate skincare routine is going to help this overproduction of oil and leave you with healthy but hydrated skin. So we don't want to overcompensate, right? If we have oily skin, we don't want to strip it of all its oil. We want to encourage it to produce as much oil as necessary to keep the, health, the skin healthy and shiny. Okay, next type of skin we've got is dry skin. And I would say that's where I kind of fall on the spectrum. My skin is drier, so I do add a lot of extra moisturizers to make sure that my skin usually looks healthy. 
Um, it's a result of too little sebum in the skin. And this can sometimes give this, the skin a tough or gritty texture for lack of oils, maybe a flaky look. Um, and it can, can cause the skin to contract and tighten. Um, the lack of lipids in the skin can also leave it looking dull. I often find on my arms, especially in the summer months, that um, if I don't hydrate on a regular basis, my eye, arms almost looked dusty or ashy or crepey. It's not a good look. So I want to make sure that I'm moisturizing, moisturizing. Even today to get on this, um, to talk to all of you here, I make sure that I moisturize my skin because I want to not only um, show that in the bright lights, my skin can look healthy, but also sitting in front of bright lights can make your skin feel a little bit just lackluster. Lights have a way of kind of drying us out or blasting us with so much light that it really brings up and shows every imperfection. Um, dry skin is uh, more common in cooler months. In very warm countries, it can be com more common in the warmer months because air con is being blasted just kind of day and night and drying out our skin. Um, when we have alternate heat sources or even cooling sources, they tend to absorb the moisture in the air and this can cause skin to itch and flake. So using appropriate products that are, it's, again, it's super important. It's really imperative to keep our skin protected from the elements, help us retain moisture in our skin. We want our skin to look natural looking. And also this poor lady, she looks like she's really um, upset, but I have to say her skin looks pretty nice to me. We want to give our skin um, elasticity, which is that ability to kind of bounce back. And we know that as we age, we lose el elasticity, but... We can help by using guasa. There are many techniques that we can use to help maintain that fresh uh, collagen-y look. And for those of you who are taking MetaPower, absolutely going to help you with your skin elasticity because skin elasticity, wow, that's a tough one, um, does depend on the quality and the quantity of the collagen that we have in our bodies. Um, let's talk a little bit about combination skin. As the name suggests, it, you have different areas. You may be targeting an oily area versus a dry area. Typically, when you have dry uh, combination skin, it's kind of that T-zone. So across the forehead and down the nose can be a little bit um, uh, more oily, whereas perhaps the jawline and the cheeks are going to be drier. Um, uh, oily zones can result in maybe even a large pores, which none of us like, especially ladies. And um, those, those large pores can become clogged with excessive dead skin cells, making us look like we, we just causing them to expand and also making us look like we maybe have breakouts or blackheads. So it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's a vicious cycle. We want to keep our skin cleansed and appropriately moisturized, but no excesses in either direction. I hope that makes sense to everybody. Okay. Um, we want to talk, let's talk a little bit about moisturizing. So every skin type really needs to moisturize, whether you are dry or oily or T-zone type or combination skin, you have to make sure that you're moisturizing and you may need to moisturize in different ways on different days. Our skin needs hydration to be able to keep from uh, drying out in hydrating environments. And then um, we want to make sure that we're getting enough moisture from the inside. And we're going to talk about how much moisture we need from the inside. When you're eating whole uh, whole foods, your skin is probably going to look a little bit better. And if you're eating whole foods, which means not really limiting ultra processed foods and getting healthy fats, your skin, everything is just going to start working and looking a little better. So skin is not something we look under a microscope. I've also often used the analogy. If you had a beautiful lawn in the back of your house and you, or you were in a park and you saw a beautiful green lawn and you noticed a brown patch would you go out there with one cup of water and just water in that brown patch? You would not. You'd start watering the whole lawn because you'd realize that that brown patch is really a symptom or a, a signal, right? For you to begin to analyze, okay, maybe this whole lawn needs a little bit of extra water if I'm getting brown patches on it. And same thing is true of skin. We're treating all the skin for the whole body in the same way and not just spot isolating because that's not going to help us. We need to uh, work from the inside out and also um, 
uh, moisturizing and helping the entire organ to feel healthy and to have that feeling nice glow on it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about anti-aging because I know some of this um, uh, goes back to um, as I age, my skin changes. I know many of you um, are trying to not only look healthy and youthful, but you want to make sure that you're not aging prematurely, right? So we can have um, crow's feet. That's sort of the wrinkles on the sides here of the eyes. We can have um, uh, features of either bagging or sagging or wrinkling underneath the eyes. Many of those uh, places are very low in sebum because we don't have as many glands there. So we're going to have to create uh, ways for us to moisturize those areas. So daily moisturizers have those, um, uh, have their, and specifically eye creams, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. There may be thicker in consistency created to access or to, to address concerns like puffiness, dark circles, and fine lines. Adding an, an, an eye cream to your daily regimen is an excellent way to prevent signs of aging and increase the overall appearance of eye health. And so whenever we see kind of a crepey baggy look, but I will say, depending on what your genetic history is, you may just have a tendency to, to have maybe drier skin or have a few more wrinkles around your eyes. I want you to embrace that. We want to be able to embrace good health at any age, at any stage, and not to be um, discriminating or to be thinking, oh, this one little wrinkle means it's the end of, it's the end of everything. It's the end of my youth. No, celebrate whatever it is your skin um, looks like right now, but help it to be the best that it can be at whatever age you are. You can customize your, um, your skincare kit, the four items that I showed you originally, with either an anti-aging eye cream, an anti-aging moisturizer, a hydrating cream, or a brightening gel. All of those four products are can be part of your um, uh, loyalty rewards program order. They'll be a little bit less expensive for you if you're purchasing them on a monthly basis. I personally order the hydrating cream every single solitary month because I like it that much. And I kind of rotate, as I said, through some of the other products, depending on the time of the year. But the brightening um, gel and the um, underaging eye cream are also two that are on my regular rotation using them daily, whether it's in the morning before I put on my makeup or at night before I, uh, before I go to bed after I've cleansed my face. I'm pretty diligent in general about applying creams. I try not to have a, I don't know, 25 step uh a skincare routine because I'm not going to do that, but I want to do something that for me really works. And I hope we can help you to develop a skincare routine that's going to, if you don't have one already, or maybe help you to tweak the one that you have. Okay. Um, we want to talk a little bit about exfoliation, why it's important, but we want to make sure that your exfoliation is very, very gentle. Now, for those of you who love exfoliation, great, but we want to make sure that you're exfoliating not only in a gentle way, but you're not doing it every day. We're not kind of ripping and tearing our skin apart and scrubbing it all up so that at the end of, I don't know, two or three weeks, we have that kind of red pinky glow that just indicates irritated skin. Our goal really is to kind of get rid of the dead skin cells that accumulate on the surface of their skin uh, in a in sort of part of their natural life cycle, right? Regular removal is going to help that build up to just clear away. And what's going to improve the texture of our skin, or at least the look of our skin, allowing our products, whatever products we're putting on on a daily basis to absorb better and also to prevent breakups and kind of reveal a healthier glow. Now, this young lady, it says it in the name, right? Young, right? She might be able to... Um, um, exfoliate her skin a little bit more regularly during the week, maybe depending on whether she has some dry areas or she has um, she's um, is challenged by blackheads or any sort of um, enlarged pores. Two to three times a week is really plenty. If you're older than this young lady in the picture, I would challenge you maybe not to exfoliate more than once a week. 
and depending on how dry your skin is. But in any, in any event, we do really need to exfoliate our skin periodically. You could go to a once a month if you needed to. In that case, the Reveal facial system will last you a really, really long time. So let me know in the chat, are you a, um, are you a exfoliator? or you're not an exfoliator. I have to say, when I do exfoliate my skin, I often look in the mirror and say, wow, what a big change. It gets rid of some of that dullness. After the winter months, especially here in the United States, I want to get rid of whatever dry skin cells that I'm not able to naturally slough off. I'd also recommend you do this in the evening because it's going to challenge your skin a little bit. You want your skin to have time to rest. We want those baby skin cells that are underneath to come out, but not to get burned, right? So we want to make sure that you're using our sunscreen every single day, especially after we're using doing our exfoliation. Um, let's talk a little bit about spot treatment. You may suffer from spots, you may not. But using the HD Clear system is a wonderful way for us to look at um, using a spot treatment. I have to say, I actually used, when I first came to doTERRA, I used the HD Clear Foaming Face Wash a lot. I really loved the pump. I loved that it foamed up. Um, my skin has gotten drier in the intervening 10 years that I've been um, using doTERRA products. And now I use some of the other cleansers instead of the HD Clear Foaming uh, Soap or Foaming Face Wash. But I do really love that formulation and I love the foam. To me, it's kind of fast, clean, quick, and non-drying. The HD Clear Moisturizer in the tall tube and then the spot treatment is in your little uh, roll-on. So um Spot treatments really can help us with uh, acne or scarring and dark spots. It's all wonderful for us to use the HD Clear. It's going to kind of speed up that process of healing. Best used during, I would say, when you're battling a breakout, maybe reducing swelling and redness and decreasing the appearances of blemishes. And obviously, these are blemishes that are more surface. If you're, if you're someone who's uh, troubled with cystic acne, you will probably need something different. And also you want to consult a medical professional that can really give you an idea of what are the, what are the reasons that this is this challenge, you're experiencing this challenge. Is it hormonal? Is it a dietary challenge? What is it that's causing this maybe more severe or more persistent acne? But for spot treatments, maybe occasional or uh, monthly for um, our women, I would use the HD Clear system. I really, really love it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, again, how our skin is the largest organ of our body. So it functions, obviously, to guard the underlying muscles, bones, and internal organs. It's also our first line of defense from environmental factors, including dehydrations, infections, diseases, right? Our skin has so many it's got a big job, our skin, really. I mean, it's the biggest organ, but it's got a big job. Um, it also serves to insulate us, regulate our temperature, convey the sense of touch, and help with the production of vitamin D. So imagine all the things the skin does. It's really pretty cool. Taking care of our skin is really one of the best investments you can make in yourself. I know people think there's those kinds of jokes on the internet about people who obsess about their skin and have these really long-winded uh, skincare routines. I'm not advocating for that, but I am advocating that you take take care of your skin and really make sure that it's it serves you appropriately for as long as you need it, which hopefully is a really long time. Um, we want to make sure that we're cleansing, moisturizing, and protecting our skin from the sun. And if you've ever used essential oils topically, you know um, that they can be calming and beautifying. I'm going to talk about 10, 10, there we go, not five, 10 that I really love. Um, there are dozens of essential oils, of course, that provide soothing, cleansing, um, softening, purifying um, properties and can aid with skin in general. Many, many essential oils, some of the first things that are listed for them are skin, that they can aid in the, in the protection of the skin. But which ones are best? I'm going to give you a list of my personal favorites and why I like them. And here are, um, here are just 10, but really 10 is... Pretty cool. And I think there's going to be a few surprises on there for you. Okay. Number one on the head parade, frankincense. I mean, I don't know if there's any mystery here. You know that the ancient Egyptians used frankincense for everything from perfume to salves 
to something for soothing the skin. You want to apply it topically um, wherever you're experiencing skin challenges. That could be for healing of a wound or for a blemish. Um, we have to always remember that the, that essential oils tend to be drying. That's all essential oils. They do not have fat in them. So if you're applying essential oil, you want to make sure you're applying it with some sort of other fatty substance. That could be a fractionated coconut oil. That could be um, one of our lotions. But applying the two things together are really going to help to glue the essential oil in place and make sure that that the healing, the skin healing goes on for a good long time. You want to rub it after, on your hands after a long day of maybe gardening or working, doing something that's dirty or scratches up your skin. I know I have, um, it, it's so funny because usually my hands are in pretty good shape and I bought a new pair of jeans and the button right here evidently had some kind of crazy thing on it and it gouged out a piece of my finger. And so I've been like babying it every day. I'm going to talk about what I'm putting on it to baby it, but I know it'll heal, but it's just that idea of, oh, I feel like the kid with the owie, right? Like oh, my, my finger, oh. but I know it'll heal because I'm using doTERRA, right? Um, second on the hit parade are, is yarrow palm. Yarrow palm comes actually in three different formulations. It comes in the active nutritive duo, as you can see here, that's my number one go-to. I keep one in my bathroom and one in the kitchen. I use it all the time. Comes with this nice dropper bottle. It's a 30 milliliter bottle. I also like, um, the beauty renewal serum. I would be applying that over my entire body as it gets warmer. That's a tricky one. Cause it can be a little bit thicker. And then last but not least are the di dietary supplements, which in the U S at least for right now are 20% off, which is really cool that I really love. Um, it's a one of a kind proprietary blend of yarrow essential oil and cold pressed pomegranate seed oil gives a lot. It has a lot of of really good skin benefits. And you can all, at least the Nutritive Duo and the Beauty Complex uh, capsules are can be taken internally, which is wonderful. And the active bot botanical ingredients revitalize the skin, um, make the skin just look a little fresher and more moisturized. You do have a slight bluish tint to the product. So that's the yarrow. So when you first apply it, you're going to actually see kind of a bluish cast our product absorbs quickly and leaves no marks or stains. As long as you give it that initial, obviously you blob it on, but many of our products have, whether they contain yarrow or they contain uh, blue chamomile can actually have a slight blue tint to them. Um, blue tansy and another one. They, um, this, the product actually has, um, when taken internally, I'm talking specifically now about the, com the um, capsules, it has active skin protecting proteins that inhibit elasticity breakdown. So we want to make sure we're maintaining breakdown of the skin. And remember, elasticity works for all of the muscles and the organs inside of our body. I'm thinking specifically of our cardiovascular system. So our Yarrow Palm Beauty cell Cellular Beauty Complex capsules, boy, that's a mouthful, are great for the skin, but they're going to help you stay elastic inside, which is even more important, right? Because they're going to promote collagen production. Um, you can use uh, Yarrow Palm, whether it's the body renewal system or the active or the nutritive duo for um, as a massage oil. You don't need to add another oil to it. It's already going to have that emollient ability due to the pomegranate oil. You can even use it, at, add it to your facial cleanser as part of your skincare routine. I would also be using it uh, one to two drops for my face. So the way I'm applying it, um, I put on my moisturizer, I add, or I put my moisturizer in my hand, I'll put one to two drops here and I'll smooth it over my face, my decolletage and my arms and hands. So I'm getting that extra kind of healing. I'll wait a few minutes to kind of let it soak in and then I'll hop into bed. But I find it just very relaxing and soothing. And it smells very similar to um, Roman chamomile, Yarrow does. So it gives me also that kind of, I don't know, that soothing release that we get at the end of the day when we take an essential oil or we use an essential oil that has a peaceful, um, regenerative, um, calming effect on the body. So it's kind of the one-two punch, refreshing and moisturizing the skin at the end of the day and also helping us to actually get some sleep. So these three products, absolutely 
super, super amazing. Um, lavender, this is, I had to mention lavender, right? Because it is really a cool product and we all use it. You can use it on your skin. I use, like to use lavender on the scalp to keep it looking clean and healthy for anybody who's suffering from maybe um, some scalp itchiness or dryness, excessive scalp, dryness or itchiness. Wonderful. You put it into your skin rotation if you're having um, uh, challenges with maybe making your hair look a little bit thicker or lustrous, you can mix it with rosemary and be applying it to the scalp every day. Um, I would look, I know, you know, Ona how to use lavender. I don't have to tell you how to use it, but it is really wonderful for maybe putting in a bath or for minor skin irritations in case you're brand new. I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about tea tree, right? So tea tree is one of those oils that I keep on hand all the time. I don't use it perhaps as much as I did maybe when my kids were little. It's a really good disinfectant. Um, it has tons of applications that you can use it for. It's known for purifying and cleansing. Um, you can use it uh, for blemishes, for skin irritations, for soothing the skin. Main ingredient, it is the main, one of the main ingredients in the Barrage skincare collection. And so it is a powerhouse product for the skin. I love the fact that the Mirage system, when used together, can be very effective. I like to incorporate the Mirage products now in the summertime. They're a little bit lighter and fresher. I don't need quite as much moisturizing in the summer. I'm going out and I find that the combination of the Mirage products and the sun uh, care products are really enough moisturizing for me. I, while I have dry skin, I'm actively moisturizing my skin literally from head to toe every single day. So I don't need that super heavy moisturizer that I do need in the winter time. And I don't like that feeling of like a hot stickiness when I actually get outside. It's still kind of cool out, right? It's not cold, right? We're not seeing zero temperature, but we're seeing more like, 20. Yeah. So it's still cool for many of that you that live in Southeast Asia, you're probably thinking 20, that's not that warm. But for us, and I'm talking about central grade, so it's about 55 here this morning, for those of you who are in, uh, talking, thinking Fahrenheit, not 20 degrees Fahrenheit, no, 20 degrees centigrade. Um, pretty good, fresh, right? So I can be using a little bit heavy moisturizer, but when it gets up to say into the 30s, the high 30s when um, centigrade, that's when, or maybe even we have a couple of 40 degree days. Oh my gosh, too, too hot. I don't want a heavy moisturizer. I want something that's light, that's gonna absorb quickly. And I'm gonna be able to just kind of get dressed and go. That's what I want for my skin. Um, let's talk a little bit about helichrysum. I love helichrysum. So good for the skin. It's great for, um, to promote healthy glowing skin. Um, its primary constituent is neural acetate, which has been shown in many experiments to um, reduce skin irritation. It does promote healthy looking skin and reduces the appearance of blemishes and wrinkles. It is a good skin healer. Um, you can see the little flower there. It's kind of a, a draw. I, I think in English, it's sometimes called a straw flower because if you were to touch any of those flowers, they actually feel kind of dry and country crunchy, even though they are fresh. Um, you can use helichrysum um, on any sort of small wrinkles, fine lines that you may have on your face. And you can also use it with uh, mixed with lavender and maybe a little bit of fractionated, fractionated co coconut oil. Gentlemen, you can use it for razor bumps. So that's a really good thing. Helichrysum is a wonderful healer. I like the way it smells. Let me know if you like the way helichrysum smells. And I know I'm getting tons of questions in the chat. I'm gonna to get to all of them at the end, um, but I just want you to know if you have a question, pop it in the chat below, we'll be sure to answer you. Okay, um, bergamot. Now you all know that this is one of my favorite citrus oils. Actually, I'm gonna take a swig of water. I'm talking so fast, my mouth is getting dry. Mm. Um, 
smells fresh and clean. It is the key ingredient in Earl Grey tea. It can be used to rejuvenate the complexion. You want to make sure with, as with all citrus oils, that you're avoiding sunlight or UV rays up to 12 hours after applying. So if you're applying it um, somewhere on the body and you're going to put clothes on top of it, you're cool. But if you're going to apply it to the face, the arms, the hands, you want to make sure that you're waiting um, at least 12 hours. So my recommendation is if you're going to use uh, Bergamot, Bergamo for healing, that you're applying it to the skin before you go to sleep, by the morning, you'll be just fine. Um, you can add it uh, to fractionated coconut oil for a facial cleanser. So ladies, if you're removing your makeup, you can be using fractionated coconut oil with a drop of bergamot to actually give you that kind of fresh, clean feeling. And it also has a kind of calming aroma. Um, and so it calms and it cleans the skin. So really, I love this particular essential oil. This is hands down one of my favorites. Um, jasmine. Now we all know jasmine as a delicious perfume, maybe even an, uh, an, an aphrodisiac. It's promoting love. We want to make sure that we're using our jasmine, whether it, we got, we have a, a tiny bottle or we're using the roll on either one really wonderful for the skin, um, glowing skin, that sense of happiness. It can actually bring, um, uh, additional circulation to the skin. So your skin begins to look really refreshed and lovely. So you can use it, spot use it on sort of imperfections twice daily. It is not sun sensitive, or you can use it um, with the, um, the roll on, the touch all over your skin, whether it's on your arms or your hands or your decolletage to just refresh your skin and help it looking um, beautiful. I think I have a few more. I think I have like three more. We've done six, I think. Next on the hit parade, sandalwood. Sandalwood was my grandma's favorite. She loved, loved, loved sandalwood, everything, whether it was soaps or talcum powder. And I know some of the things, products that she probably used, we wouldn't use today because we wouldn't consider them safe, but she loved that scent, scent of sandalwood. And I do too, because of its chemical constituent, um, it's made, it, the, the main chemical constituent is uh, santalone, right? So um, that is beautifying to the skin. It can uh, minimize imperfections. Um, it can also smooth out the skin. I would be adding it into my daily moisturizer. If you like some of these oils that I've been talking about, you could add a couple of them. You don't have to just add only a single one. So you could use a sandalwood with a little bit of bergamot, or you could add a little bit of lavender in there. You're also getting the different properties of the oil. So this is a wood oil, right? Or a resin. Um, it comes out as a thick sort of a viscous fluid, different from frankincense, which is um, eventually once it's distilled, the resin is distilled, it's actually much uh, thinner. Sandalwood is actually a thick, very viscous liquid when it, after its distillation, you could blend a little bit of sandalwood with some lavender. So you're getting a floral oil in there and then maybe bring in a citrus like your bergamot. And that'll really help to promote skin renewal and refreshing and also minimizing uh, blemishes and fine lines on a regular basis. So I'm challenging you perhaps to come up with your own formulation based on the challenges that you have or the things you'd like to support in your own skin. Let me know in the chat if you've made any sort of a roll on and what you for skin and what you've put in it. You can add also sandalwood into your moisturizing cream. Many of our moisturizing products actually have sandalwood in it. They also have rose, which you're going to talk about in a minute, but you can always use extra, right? You can also put your sandalwood in a bowl of water and then steam your face so that that rising steam is going to kind of refresh your pores and open them up and allow you to really cleanse um, uh, thoroughly. Let's talk about rose, as I mentioned before. And I'm putting Correctex in this, uh, kind of juxtaposing it. I like rose alone. It does have astringent qualities. So it reduces the appearance of skin imperfections when applied topically. I just love it for the way it smells, but I do know it's wonderful. It's like super wonderful for the skin. And I use my rose all the time. I want to challenge you also to think about different formulations. So we may have a thinner product that's mixed with fractionated coconut oil. And we have our, what I'm going to call our thickest product, right? Which is our Correct X, which is really a thick, 
viscous ointment. That's going to be an occlusive product that when you have some sort of skin imperfection, like I have my boo-boo on my finger, I'm using my Correct-X every single day. So think about layering your products based on what your skincare needs are. Whether you are using something just topically for a small blemish, maybe on your face, or you're working on something. I know um, several of you have mentioned challenges with extra, extra dry, flaky skin, maybe on the shins or on the arms. You want to make sure that we are creating a barrier that doesn't allow any moisture to escape. In the same time, providing something that's mild enough that's not going to break down the skin or irritate it in any way. So you're, the, the, the challenge, if you will, with creating a skincare routine is we've got different tools and different levels. So depending on what challenges that we're facing or what challenges we want to avoid, right? I want to avoid really dry or flaky skin that we're creating a routine that our skin begins to respond appropriately and says, wow, this is great for me. So I hope that makes sense for you. And I hope as you develop your own skincare routine, you begin to say to yourself, yes, this is really the direction that I want to be going in. Last but not least, Roman chamomile. Um, it is used in just all kinds of things, face creams, hair dyes, shampoos, perfumes. A lot of what you see on the market is going to be fake. It is not authentic. Um, doTERRA, of course, is diligent about making sure that we have an authentic, um, certified, pure product. It's kind of a sweet, floral, herbaceous, and soothing product. You can uh, add it into your moisturizer. You can add it into unscented lotion and apply it to your body after a bath. I love this Robin Cabamile for babies. You're going to dilute, 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 obviously for anything that you're putting on a baby, but just kind of that soothing, I don't know, relaxing, put the sleeping baby into bed. Roman chamomile is your um, go-to, um, but it works for adults too. If you're a person who doesn't quite have a sleep routine, but wants to add your Roman chamomile and it will also protect your skin. So don't forget, last but not least, don't forget to hydrate. You want to make sure that you're drinking water throughout the day and other eating maybe water-filled fruits That's and vegetables. Things like cucumbers or watermelon are really filled with water are going to help you to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Avoiding um, heavy either fatty foods or salty foods that can tend to dry us up. I know last night I went, yesterday was Mother's Day. Hey, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. I went for a very salty meal last night. It was delicious, but um, super salty. And I woke up this morning and I, I felt like my tongue was glued to the roof of my mouth. Didn't quite drink a lot of water, which you could see I was drinking water again. So today I need to push hydration to make sure that my skin stays hydrated looking. I don't get that kind of bleh look from getting dried out, but also that I'm hydrating from the inside out. I want to make sure I'm uh, maintaining great skin tone and elasticity and also eating things, as I mentioned before, whole foods that are filled with water, whether it's lettuces, anything that you can think of when you break it and it feels that kind of juicy crunch, that's the thing that you're looking for. Let me know in the chat, how much water are you drinking every day? Are you drinking? Let me know maybe in cups or liters. I'd love to find out because that's really going to determine um, a lot about what your skin looks like. Okay, so here's just a quick summary. We, we know that there's many benefits to um, using doTERRA products, including not putting irritating chemicals on our skin, making sure that the things that are actually in our products are safe for us and not going to um, cause our skin to either overreact to get super dry or super oily. We want to balance our skin. And I think that's the, the message of the day. We want to make sure that we're adding in and not subtracting from our skin and just creating that lovely, wonderful balance so that our skin looks as beautiful and glowing as this, this young woman here. So I want to get excited for get, having the best skin that we can possibly have. I think that's the best way. Keep in contact with me on social media, if you would. 
Um, we're on all the social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. We're always excited to just see your comments, see what it is you have to say. Skin is no different. This is one of my favorite topics. Talked about skin a lot, maybe not so recently, but it is a really kind of fun way to connect with people because everybody wants good skin, right? I never met a person who said, oh yeah, I wish my skin were bad. Uh-uh, it's right, super important. Last but not least, thank you. Thank you for having been here and have a wonderful week. We're going to be talking next week about specifically about sunscreen, which is kind of the flip side of this um, whole uh, skin protection. We talked a lot today about different products, about some different essential oils. I hope that you got some good um, information and that whatever questions you may have, you're going to be able to add them in the chat and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Have a wonderful week, everyone. And keep having some beautiful skin because really it's the best and biggest organ that you have. So enjoy it. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.